What's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to teach you everything you need to know about building a stock tank pool. First thing is first, locating one. There it is. Just bought a uh, eight foot stock tank. Super stoked on that. So uh, let's go find a trailer so we can pick it up. I found mine at Tractor Supply Company and luckily for me there was a Home Depot right down the street so I was able to rent a truck pretty easily. Oh yeah. All right, we got it. It is hot out here. This thing is secured to the back of my Home Depot truck. Time is of the essence. I only rented this thing for an hour, so let's get this bad boy home. Woo! Once you get it home, it's pretty easy to unload. It's lightweight and you can roll it right where you want it. After you get your tank where you want it, make sure you level the ground. I use four bags of leveling sand and I got that at Lowe's. You can also pick this up at Home Depot too. If your tank is smaller than mine, you won't need as much and my tank is an eight foot radius. After you get your tank leveled, the next step of the process will be finish landscaping around it. For me, I used mulch, but this is only a temporary solution I do plan on laying down stone, and I definitely recommend stone if you can afford it. But for me, I didn't have it in the budget, so I just laid down some mulch. But like I said, I am gonna replace this with stone. I have found out that mulch does get pretty dirty, so I definitely recommend doing stone. It makes it easier for draining too. Once you get your landscaping figured out, the next step of the process is, you guessed it, and it's probably why you're watching this video, drilling the holes and then setting up the pump. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to order is the pump. And this is everything it comes with in the box. So after you order the pump and the extra plunger valve, the next thing you're gonna need is the Intex replacement part kit. And this is gonna include another plunger valve and a strainer collector. All right, these are the three things you're definitely gonna to need to build this tank. And I will label them in the description, one, two, and three. Your pool pump does come with a filter too. So for right now, you don't need to order extra filters. You can probably do that within the first month of your pool being built. Let's talk about the next step of the process, which is building the inlet nozzle and outlet strainer. The filter pump does not come with an outlet strainer, so you're gonna have to build your own. And that's why I told you to order the third thing on the list, which is the replacement Intex pool pump parts. The difference between the outlet strainer and the inlet nozzle, the outlet is going to be the one that's gonna suck in the water. The inlet is going to push the water back into the tank. This is how you assemble it. It's really not rocket science. are gonna to need to pick up a hole saw two and three quarter inch drill bit. It also comes with an adapter. I picked mine up at Lowe's. It sucks, you gotta buy this part. You're only gonna to need to use it twice, but this is the correct size. All right, so once you got all your parts organized, the next thing you're gonna to need to do is drill your two holes. I measured a foot away from either side of the seam on my tank and I put it centered. I saw a lot of videos where they were trying to do higher and lower. It doesn't matter. I've been running my tank now for over a week. It seems completely fine. I put both of them right in the middle and I don't think it matters left and right either. As long as you have the pump going and filtering, I think you're fine. If you put it really below, like I've seen in other videos, you're not gonna be able to get those plunger valves on and I don't think it's gonna be good for the tank. So my recommendation, just put both of them right in the middle. 
Once you're done drilling, I suggest you file them down just to be on the safe side. And then we're gonna put the outlet strainer and inlet nozzle in. On my tank, I put the inlet nozzle to the right. Make sure that rubber gasket is on the inside of your tank. Go ahead and tighten that up. Next, you're gonna put your outlet strainer on. Make sure that rubber gasket goes on the inside. And go ahead and tighten that up. I didn't use any caulk or plumber's glue or whatever else I was seeing other people use on YouTube. Like I said, this thing has been built for over a week now. I check it every day for leaks. I have had zero. So go ahead and do that if you want, but I decided to skip that step and it's worked out pretty good for me. After you got your outlet strainer and inlet nozzle in, the next thing you're gonna do is hook up the pump. On your outlet strainer, you're gonna find this little top piece thing. You're going to need to put the black cap on. Let me repeat that. Make sure you put the black cap on the outlet strainer. On the inlet nozzle, you do not need to put that black cap on. This is going to control the airflow. The sucking in and pushing that air back out. After you got everything assembled, Fill the pool up until the water is above the outlet strainer and inlet nozzle. Once the water level is above the outlet strainer, you can go ahead and unlock the plunger valves. Make sure the other valves on your pool pump are open. You're gonna find three of them. Once you have done that, go ahead and turn your pump on. You'll hear it. And you'll say to yourself, what the heck, Steve? The pump isn't working. You're right, not yet. Once you start noticing water coming through those little pump valves, it's time to close it. You're bleeding the lines. The last one is going to be the filter on the top part of the pump. Once you see water coming through that, tighten it down. Your pump should be working. You're gonna notice it right away. After that, fill the rest of your tank up and enjoy it. Hopefully this video has helped you. I thought about this project for years and I'm finally glad it's complete. My kids love it, I love it, and it's a great way to cool off when it's a hot summer day. When it comes to balancing your pool chemicals, I picked up three inch chlorine tablets from Amazon. I also picked up this clear balance and that is going to balance your alkalinity and pH. When you first start putting chemicals in your pool, I recommend opening up your chlorine dispenser to four tabs just to shock the pool at first. But after 24 hours, you can go ahead and close it to one. When you shock your pool, I recommend running your pump for 24 hours. After that, you can run it anywhere between two to four hours a day. I run mine at four hours a day. Make sure you're checking your pool with these test strips every single day and you should be good. If your pH or alkalinity is high just add another ph balancer and once your chlorine tablet runs out just go ahead and throw another one in thanks for watching guys hopefully this video helped if you like my videos go ahead and hit that subscribe button until next time peace out